Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I'm coming back at you with yet another viewer request video. This time, uh, talking about, hey, what are the different types of bad data you might be dealing with as a data engineer, and how can you handle it? So, not only going to go through the different types of bad data, but what this video is really going to be focused on is showing you how you can implement, you know, real scripts, real checks and balances to handle things like incomplete data, data not having the right type, data having missing values, duplicates, inconsistent data, making sure you can create automated checks to catch and then process and fix these data quality issues as part of your data ingestion pipelines. Um, so if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, consider joining my Patreon, helps me out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into it. So the first and a very common uh, type of missing data is missing data. Um, and this is, you know, probably the data quality issue that you'll run into the most where you have data that appears as null, uh, NAN, empty strings, placeholder values, um, and it's really important to implement detection and handling for these in situations so you don't have to parse through the data yourself. Um, and a really good way of doing that is with Python, and that's where I'm going to be showing you most of these scripts today, um, because Python is really good at working with any type of data and also doing the kind of more complex manipulation and parsing that you need to handle data quality issues. Um, so first, what we have here um, is a method for handling missing data. So just importing pandas and numpy, just typical Python data manipulation tools. Um, and here we're going to say, hey, this is my strategy, um, default to drop, um, with a threshold of how many columns I should drop, uh, or what columns I should drop if they have too many missing values. Um, so here, you know, I basically have a couple different options for how I want to handle missing values, right? And that's going to, you know, depend on your use case. Do you want to fill with a median value? Do you just want to drop people that have any missing values? Um, in this case, I'm going to say, hey, we want to set a threshold where if half of the values in a column are missing, I actually just want to drop that column because I don't think that column is of a good data, enough data quality to be relevant for uh, my data set, right? And this is something you play around with. is isn't just a one size fits all approach. Um, but the first step for any of these is going to be first identifying missing data. So here we have a pandas data frame where we are checking basically, so number one, just the amount of columns. And we are also checking the missing count. So this is going to check for any nulls. So checking is null. That is going to basically sum up and create an array of all the different uh, t uh, rows that have null values in there. Um, and then that's going to then calculate a missing percentage of, hey, for each, uh, for this data frame, what is the average, you know, total percentage of the data frame that contains null values um, in row entries. So then it's going to print out some, you know, missing statistics on it. Um, and then based on the strategy, so let's say if I have, I, I want to go with my original drop strategy. Here, what you would do is say, hey, if columns drop, I want to drop any columns that have uh, that exceed my threshold, which is 50% here, of missing values, right? And then so any columns that exceed that threshold are then going to be dropped. Um, and then you can also see dropping any rows with any missing values in remaining columns as well. So if you identify, hey, there's just one column that's really screwed up and, you know, maybe a couple other nulls that I also want to, you know, in other columns, but not enough to warrant deleting the whole column, you can also, you know, just purge those as well. Um, but not purge the entire other columns because obviously you can't purge them all. Um, next option is just a fill with the mean value. So here it will take the mean value of a column and then fill any NA uh, data points with that mean value. So if you want to just say, hey, you know, I want to make sure these guys are just given the average, you know, maybe they just screwed up or we weren't able to collect data on them, but I know they're a real person, they're a real data point, and, you know, just to make it neat, I'm you know, going to just give them an average value. Right, um, and same thing for median, but just you know giving them the median value rather than the mean, um, and then the mode as well. Just depending on hey, you know what kind of average do you want? You know is most relevant to fill in there. That's what you should choose. Um, and then you also have forward fill, um, where where what this will do is actually just take the next value um, and put it into that. So hey, if I'm customer A and I have a null value in my location column. It's just going to go to customer B and take their value from the location column and fill it in there. So not quite averaging or just like saying, hey, you know, if I know that these guys are grouped by their location and that if they haven't filled that lo location value out, it's likely that they're also of that same location. Could be a good option. Um, and then interpolate, interpolate will just basically say, hey, 
between, you know, if I'm customer B and I'm between customer A and C, it's going to take, an, you know, the midpoint between our two values and replace that as mine. Uh, you also can define different placeholder values if you want to keep them uh, as nulls, but, you know, just have a clean placeholder value in there. You can just manually insert and define there as well. Um, and then how you would use this is just saying, hey, pass in my missing data with the strategy I want to use, and this will go through and process your data um, according to whatever strategy you define. Um, so that is the first type of data quality checks I want to talk about. Now, next thing I want to talk about is handling things like when you have duplicate values. Um, so, you know, duplicates can be exact copies or partial duplicates based on the you know, fields that you are checking for duplication. Um, so here we're going to create a new script for duplicates.py. And what we're going to do here is just write a script to to identify and handle those duplicate records. So it's going to accept, you know, Panda's data frame that you want to check for duplicates, um, the columns that you want to consider for duplicates. If you don't want to consider all of the columns um, for duplicate values, you know, maybe you just have one unique identifier and you don't care if other columns have duplicate values in there. Um, and then the handling method you want to define for handling duplicate values. So first, last, so take, you know, either the first duplicate it detects as the one and drop the second one, or drop the first one and keep the last, second one. Um, or false, where you just remove any duplicate uh, rows. So just you would remove both of them if you had two duplicates. Um, you also have fuzzy matching for text fields. And what this is basically going to do is say, hey, and threshold for that is, you know, if I have George Yates, but in my G is in lowercase, it's going to do fuzzy matching to say, hey, even if there's another George Yates with G in the uh, uppercase, that will still count as a duplicate and you can define, and you can also just remove that if you don't want it. Uh, but good way to detect duplicates that you know, hey, maybe I just didn't hit uh, caps on one of my entries, right? Very likely, and you still want to catch those duplicates. So the first step of this duplicate checker is just to go to the duplicates and say, hey, uh, find the exact duplicates. So DF, there is already a function for this. So duplicated um, is a check that will go in and say, hey, these are the number of duplicate rows. Um, and then if it is greater than zero, this is then going to define and sort the values of, hey, where are those duplicate ro rows? within that uh, data frame. And then this, if you just want to drop the duplicates, so, hey, I just want to drop any duplicates, drop that there. Um, and then down here, you can do, so fuzzy matching for near du duplicates. Um, this is where you're implementing that, hey, I'm going to check those columns, check those indices of near duplicate values, um, and then choose which ones to keep or remove um, if they were you know, near, near duplicates or not near duplicates. Um, and then if they are, you know, then checking, hey, you know, I, I still want that to go in um, and drop any indices that still have those duplicate values. Um, and this is where you have keep equals keep. So this is going to define the rules. So that's why, you know, we define first up here. So this is when it's dropping is only going to drop the second duplicate it finds. It's always going to keep the first one. Um, and so you can change that just at the top of that, and that'll propagate through here. Um, and you know, go and, and drop any indices, things like that, um, with that after that fuzzy matching as well. Um, and you can see implementation is literally just passing in, hey, what columns do you want to check for duplicates? Data frame, fuzzy matching, true or not. Um, and if you want to change the keep method, you can also just pass in a keep value there, like this. So you can just go keep equals last, right? If I wanted to change that to last instead of first. Now, another really common issue with data quality is needing to standardize formats. So, you know, when you're someone's filling out a form, not everyone is going to write things like their phone number the same way, their email the same way, uh, write dates the same way. You know, people in America versus Europe are going to write your dates differently. Um, and so it's important to incorporate standardization formats to make sure your data is always following a copy the same pattern so that when data doesn't follow a pattern, it doesn't throw you off um, because you're just reading that data wrong because it was entered in a way that you didn't expect. Um, so here, what we're going to do is show you how to do exactly that. So go through and first, you know, just copy in a fresh data frame. So no you know, methods here. We're just going to go through and implement all our standardization methodologies within the function this time. Um, so here, the first thing it's going to do is, you know, for this example, go through the phone number column um, and say, hey, for every phone that isn't a null value, uh, take out that phone string um, and then remove any non-alphanumeric characters. Um, and then format the first three letters as, you know, this the uh, in parentheses, um, and then take from three to six. Uh, so the next three letters um, outside the parentheses, dash, and then the rest of the phone number there. Um, and so you can kind of template out the strings that you want to build with Jinja templating to 
parse any type of phone number uh, by removing all those non-alphanumeric characters, which just gives you the raw numbers and basically building it back up into the template that you want. Um, and then you also have the option to, hey, if this is a uh, foreign number, you know, that actually has, you know, if it has a length of 11, you know, someone added the one at the beginning, right? So you see that the check for one here, that's going to just remove the one and then format our phone just as uh, the other phone number was as well. Because you don't really need the one country code unless you know, you're getting uh, phone numbers from everywhere in the world. Um, similarly, for email standardization, you know, here we're first going to again going to check for emails. Then we're going to strip the text and have it all sent to lowercase, so we don't want any cut caps values that could potentially throw off uh, things downstream. Um, and then also validate the email format, so make sure it you know it doesn't contain any unexpected characters. It contains the word email. Otherwise, return a null value for this email because we don't think it is actually an email. Um, now, date standardization, there's a lot of tools for this, luckily, um, where here we can say, hey, get the date string and then try multiple date formats to see which one it is. So you can, you know, whatever date format you want to standardize on, you can go through and, you know, check that out. Um, and so here, what we're going to do is basically take from any date format that this could be, you know, just trying to parse it in. Um, and, you know, whatever way this is structured, we're going to strip the time from it using the date time uh, package and then output it in the standard date object um, from date, the date time package. Um, if there's no format matches, it couldn't detect what format it is, just keep the original date because we still do want a date in there. Um, and then here we're applying the standardization. So this is allowing us to apply it to every column, uh, email in every column, um, and then also finding and cleaning the date column. So here's actually going to check, you know, is date in the column name? If it is, then it's going to run that. Um, and you also have standardization of text case. So this is just going to run through all the other uh, rows and send everything to lowercase. It's always best practices to, you know, unless you absolutely need to keep things in different cases to just send everything to uh, either lower or upper. So for names, sending all to lower for codes that are, you know, hey, I need to, you know, have these all in caps. So things like security codes, um, you know, you can set standard formats for those and it makes downstream data processing much, much easier. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about is saying, hey, how can we handle things like bad data types, wrong data types, different data types or data being saved as, you know, wrong data types and applying ways to check and make sure we have consistent formatting for data types because that is a massive issue if you don't have everything set as the right data type. When you start loading things into databases or using it for ML processing, you need to make sure your data types are tight. So what we'll do here is create bad data types .py, um, and here show you a script for validating and converting data types to a common format. So first we'll have, you know, hey, just the pandas data frame, we want to uh, validate and convert. And then the list of column names that we want to convert to desired types. Um, and first what we can do is just set an auto detection uh, for appropriate types. Um, so this is if, hey, I don't know what type it should be set. I just want to have a method that will automatically detect what type it should be and set them all to that common type if they follow these uh, parameters, right? So if, you know, I want all of my, in this example, I'm just taking my, you know, head of this data, dropping in ANAs, and then saying for each, sam you know, for this sample, for the type mapping for, you know, column A, right, for it's going to go through every single column, it's going to check, hey, does this contain, uh, you know, period signs? Does that indicate it has a decimal point? So if it does have a decimal point, I want it to be a float, because those can handle decimal values better. Otherwise, if it doesn't contain any periods, then I want it to set it as an integer, because it isn't a decimal. Then we're also going to have a check for date time. So, hey, if I want to check for uh, if this is in the proper date time format, maybe it's not. Maybe, you know, I didn't save this as date time. I just saved it as a string, converting uh, a sample, you know, that column to the proper date time format. Um, and then also checking for, you know, hey, if I want to check for things like a Boolean value, right? So if I want to make sure that every value is set or true or false, and people might have set it a T, F, 1, 0, right? What this is going to do is set all of these different types. And this is where if you have, hey, you know, I know people are going to have many different ways of writing this response that really means the same thing. You add those to an array and say, hey, all of these really just mean Boolean value. Uh, and if they don't contain one of those, then convert it to a string. Um, and then you can also catch any conversion errors, so convert types um, in here. Um, and then down here, what we're going to do is apply those methods to the uh, different columns. So here going for each column saying, hey, I want to, for that integer, uh, 
you know, if, number one, clean, apply the numeric values, uh, fill the NA, and then make sure it's a proper integer type. Same thing for, or similar thing for my float, you know, converting any float values that were identified as a float value to that float type. Um, and this is because, you know, at first we're just checking the sample, so we make sure we don't have taken all the data just to assess what each column should be. And then down here is when we're actually applying uh, the methodologies that we defined up there. So we're first identifying what columns need to be changed, and then down here, actually changing those columns um, and you know raising exceptions if anything goes wrong and then printing out just a simple report of it um, and all you need to do here is just you know pass in hey validate and convert types from that data frame um, and yeah really that the what should, the takeaway should be here you know hey for any of these types of responses for any of these you want to find hey what is the common trait i'm looking for so you know number if there's a bunch of letters and it's not saved as a string something like that you want to always convert it to a string um, is there a decimal point for float values? Just find whatever your column common identifiers of something needing to be a certain data type should be and define these checks and then implement them over your entire data set. Um, and that is everything I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Um, data guy out.